زال مستوجب يا سيد اسمع Question. I heard in one of the channels that God has a human soul and and divine spirit. Some of the questions are and the answers are correct. He has a human soul which was separated from his body, that's why he died. However, his divinity never departed from his humanity, even for a twinkle of an eye. The unity within the Trinity is unlimited and there is no separation at any time. We say it this way, his divinity is united with his humanity. 
while his human body separated from his human soul, but his divinity never departed. Question. I got married to my husband, not, not married on her on a basis of love. I wonder how long she has been married to remember now she is not in love with him. Before marriage, there is, should be some sort of comfort in the mind and acceptance by the heart and we bring other people to help us to reach a feeling of comfort. It doesn't have to be love though, but there has to be comfort in the heart. But if she is not comfortable in her heart, then she should not get married. We thought, and some people think wrongly, that we have to reach a romantic type of love before marriage, and that's not usually should be the case, but has to be some sort of comfort. Prayers are so important before and during the choice and during the engagement, and they should pray a lot. So if it is from God, it will continue. But you cannot come back while you are married and think back if you were in love or not. Do it like what St. Paul that, who said, I forget what is past and I go forward. So you do not think again of what happened and you continue to believe this is a gift from God and cannot be returned back. Another question. Pope Shenouda mentioned that we came to the States and immigration land for a cause and your reverence said we should evangelize what to do. Number one, pray a lot. Number two, you should show how great your virtues are. Number three, pray for people around you all the time. And always try to read and study so whenever an, an, a topic is opened, you can respond back. So as St. Paul said, you can respond to people regardless of what they ask you and you are willing to respond in wisdom. And that's the method of evangelism. You can also study online a six-month course on evangelism if you are interested, if you write stpaulservices.com. And there are several priests here like Father Johanna Abadir who responds uh, and helps people to start evangelism um, courses. Many of those servants and priests and can start an evangelism course uh, at any time. Even um, the bishops in the diocese are also encouraging the Ardhya. Question, what is the meaning that the sons of this generation are more wiser. Here it means not wisdom or good wisdom, but rather more cunning. So this is not pure wisdom, but rather than devilish type of wisdom. You have to understand the context of the wisdom and how the verse is written. Their cunningness is superseding the wisdom of the sons of God and the daughters of God. So you may not be able to overcome their cunningness. But you want to ask for the heavenly wisdom that's coming from above. A question regarding Light for Orphans is covering orphans may be changed very soon to become Light for All 
so it can cover many other services, not just orphans. Because the activities today are far more than orphans. We cover the widows, we cover the unemployed, we cover the uh, disabled children, we cover um, the atheists in Africa. All, this Afri all these services can be covered by Light for All. All the people here are um, serving f full time with no administrative fees. And because of that, we can do a lot of other things um, in other places. And there are a lot also of association between one and another. You can pay for life for orphans and still can cover other things like Egypt without sickness can also be through Light for Orphans. I am grateful for your help. Regardless of the service that I'm speaking about, Light for Orphans is covering all of them. And Pope Tawadros is in agreement and His Grace Bishop David is one of the most uh, welcoming bishops for these services and he always welcome and ask people to participate and congratulations on bishop uh, gabriel uh, i'm sure he will be an amazing addition to the area especially for the bishops he is one of the uh, youth and uh, his presence in this area will help the youth very much between the two bishops and the youth uh, servants and the youth priest will be great. Another question. There is a wave of thinking honoring the idea of mental health rather than casting devils and thinking that these were all related to mental health issues and not casting out evil uh, spirits. Of course not. We cannot just confuse the matter. Of course there is a mental health, but there is also spiritual diseases. Because of our lack of education in Egypt, some people think because of occasional depression or psychosis, some people will think this is a spiritual disease or uh, an evil spirit. Of course, that's not correct either. There is a lot of uh, stresses which a lot of people sometimes they say, oh, this is related to an evil spirit, but now we know it's a psychological disease. But of course, there is um, casting out evil spirits. But as the Father said, there is far less common evil spirits dwelling in humans after the crucifixion of our Lord. Of course, if you have, have ever seen um, a man who is possessed, you will know right away this is not just a simple mental health issue and uh, that person will be very angry uh, with uh, prostrating the sign of the cross or praying next to him. And that's the easiest diagnosis uh, to differentiate between a spiritual illness with um, evil possession versus um, psychological or mental health issue. Science is always good, but be careful because sometimes um, science can be prideful and some of those um, therapists may think that they know it all and they forget there is also need for godliness, prayers and so forth. Of course science can be used uh, in the religious field and the spiritual field to heal and cure a lot of people. There is nothing wrong with material things. There is nothing wrong with the presence of money 
in your pocket, but the love of money is an issue. But if you can offer these things to serve in the field of God, that will be great. Same happens with science or medicine. And that's why our Lord said, I, you have concealed it uh, from the minds of the philosophers and revealed it to the children. Saint Paul used an interesting expression when he says science is or knowledge is uh, false and deceiving. So the true science has to be evidence and diagnosis and investigations and final conclusion. It has its own basics. It's not just a theory and he thinks um, every theory has to be a true uh, thing. But if it, the true science must be based on so many other factors. So some of the scientists occasionally put things on top of each other to prove something that has no evidence, which what we call pseudoscience or fake science or deceiving science. And that's very common across the board. Unfortunately, this can deceive many people. What's the difference between judging and talking bad about others? Both are bad. To talk about others without positive gain is one step. To judge others is a step even beyond that. To talk about others and discuss their lives will lead to judgment. While judgment, judgment is to pass a declaration and announcement that this person is wrong. Another question. I have a problem dealing with people in the church and at work. Sometimes I deal in love and they think it's weakness and lack of wisdom. But all the people around you, all, all the people around me do not love me. Answer. When I see somebody generalizing that everybody is bad and doesn't love me, more than likely you are the problem. It's not possible that everyone hates you or feels this way. You should not generalize. Of course, there are people who may be evil, but you cannot just have every single one does not love you. So please do not exaggerate or generalize. Try not to change even if people around you are difficult. Try not to change your ways even if the people are deceitful around you. Even if people are unfair to you, that doesn't mean you should be unjust and aggressive because at the end you will lose. Do not change something good in you because something bad around you. Don't let people switch your good attitude and good virtues to become bad. Like someone stole something from you, so you stop being generous. That doesn't mean because he is bad, you stop being generous and kind. Try to remove the bad thing in you, but don't let the good things to be lost. Question. My kids accept everything from their dad, but they never accept anything from me. He answers by saying, <coughs> they don't 
like me because I'm always trying to teach them hymns and he wants to make them watch TV. It, the best is to balance and both of you and their father. You should not give them hymns all the time and of course he should balance um, what he offers. And it's very important that you and your husband agree on the same way of um, treating the kids. It's very easy for the kids to manipulate and to choose whom to follow and make you both against each other. But when the kids are aware that both are united in their manners and plans, they follow the same way. We are going to show a video now. It's about projects related to the youth. There is a project called Be Perfect. This project trained 350 servants to help 3,000 high school boys and girls and the idea is to help them grow and become more mature and grown up. Another one, fulfill your dream and there is basically helping people with mid-educational degrees to help them reach a different or higher degree to reach better employment. The next one is about nursing and how to make a nursing school. We trained thousands of nurses and many of them now have so many better jobs and they are educated both educationally and practically. And of course, all the people who are training them are volunteers. Technical education. Uh, we have relationship with an Italian IT program called Don Bosco. And we bring groups from Upper Egypt and they become technicians and also they learn Italian and they can continue their education in Italy. We have another project called the Apologetics which is helping in every diocese how to defend faith, how to respond to questions. All of these are programs related to the youth and every program I mentioned there is a group is being targeted for them to become able to serve others. So we have one for um, the pre-K children. There are another group uh, serving the illiterate women and then being followed centrally after the training. So this idea will help many places and make all the churches work better and of course the servant is benefiting because he found a place to serve and of course the trainees are being trained to do better in their lives. We are going now to have the sayings of the fathers. John Chrysostom wrote, Knowledge of holy books strengthen the soul, purifies the conscience, removes, domini removes lusts, 
deepens the virtues, transcends the mind, gives the ability to face unexpected surprises. When your mind is very busy with your holy books, your spirit is elevated, your conscience is cleaner, your desires are removed, deepens the virtues, increases the wisdom, increases the humility, and makes your mind transcends over the bad things and the sins, and helps you to face unexpected surprises, and you become in much more peace, because you are in much more deeper thinking. It also protects from the strikes of Satan. Satan is very hard, very difficult for him to come closer to a person who reads the Bible. Transports us to heaven itself, liberates man from the body, and gives him wings to fly. Look how many blessings you can have just by reading the Bible. So whenever you have weakness, you have anger, you have a sin, just read more the Bible. Saint Augustine read the same thing. The Bible is the mouth of Jesus Christ. He is sitting in heaven and talking on earth. So our Lord who is sitting on the throne, He is speaking to you through the book you have, which is the Bible. It's an amazing feeling that you are always sitting with Christ and you are always learning from Him and under His feet. There is no other way to enter heaven except through the only begotten Church, Saint Shenouda. Do not ever think there is another way to enter God and heaven without going through His Bride, the Church. How can you try to learn about Christ without knowing His body, which is the Church? How can the commandments come from the head, which is Christ, unless towards the body? So when you are part of the body of the Church, you understand what goes in the head and you follow the direction and the guidance. Let's go back to the questions. Going through the church history, we see that there were constant changes. The youth feel that this part of the church is so solid. They have a lot of liturgical responses that we do not. If you read the history carefully, the lit liturgical bases are present since the earliest church. There was agios from the beginning. Lift up your hearts were present from the beginning. From the end of the first century, through many investigations and research, were present since the beginning of the early church. But of course, not every word is, was said back there. And the reason or the evidence that we have so many other churches like St. Cyril, St. Basis, and St. Gregory, and the other churches like St. James and St. John Chrysostom. But the basics are always there. So there is a place for the catechumens and the educational part or the liturgy of the word, then the worship, and then the reconciliation prayer, then the sanctification of the bread and wine, and then communion. Those are certain corners and basics that are not changed over the years. They may have been developed over the generations and from the sayings of the fathers who are based on the liturgical and the Bible. 
The liturgy is the best guard of faith. Almost all of you did not read and educate themselves in theology and the councils. But if you know how to pray the, the Eucharist, your mind is based now on theological basis that came from theology and councils, just by you praying the liturgy. And that's why Saint Ogris said, if you pray the liturgy, then you are faithful and your faith is sound. Because even if you hear something that's questioning you on something, and then you remember the liturgical prayer or the Igbeya prayer, then you will say, why should I follow this? That's not how I pray. If somebody tells you there is no intercessions, and then you say in the intercessions of Saint Mary, of course right away you will resist that. But then right away you say, we are worshiping Christ. We are not saying we are worshiping Saint Mary. So, so the changes that happen in liturgy should not us because the fundamentals and the basics are unchanged. Our faith that there is transfiguration of the bread and wine into body and blood are our faith and the cornerstone of every liturgy. So when you come to say, let's change, change what? Should we change minor things? For example, we can we can prolong a little part or shorten one part. Like for example, during Pope Shenouda, when they have a lot of churches in the immigration land, they found that they don't have the waters of the Nile. So the Holy Senate agreed that the prayers, the litanies, can be all united together rather than to the Nile. So now we have the three litanies of weather, water, and crops. From one to another. So that change is logic and location that we are in. That, of course, is logic and practical without affecting the basic fundamentals. So there has to be agreement among the fathers of the church and a research and investigation and a conclusion. But to change some language, that's okay because some of you are living in different places in the world. Now we are praying in so many languages, not just Coptic, we're, we're praying Arabic, Italian, French, and English. That's not modification, but rather a fatherly feeling that the liturgy needs to be customized to the language and the location. But the principles of the, of the Eucharist and the basics of the Eucharist are never going to change since the first century. And that's why, regardless of where you are, a small village in Egypt or in Australia, they are going to pray the same liturgy and the same Eucharist. How is the charitable organizations related to evangelism. I would like to speak to you about what I call silent evangelism. Saint Mary is a silent evangelist. She did not evangelize outside, but when she found Saint Matthias was imprisoned, Saint Mary went and she dissolves the iron steels because of her prayers, and all the township heard about it. But everyone in the town 
they heard about this beautiful woman and they want her, they want to follow her. There are people will will draw and decorate their walls with Saint Mary based on their pictures because her beauty applies to every to every nation, although she herself never traveled. And even in Egypt, people, they love Saint Mary and adore her and revere her even though they are not Christian. So how did Saint Mary evangelize? She did all of that silently, just by her light. She evangelized. They see your good works, so they honor and revere your Father in heaven. So these charitable deeds, you are serving everyone and you are giving programs to all people, whether medical or screening or technology. The people who are benefiting, they may ask a question, what is the objective of these people? And they ask, what is the reason of your service? So, to do mercy, you should not limit it to the people of your color or kind, but rather giving mercy to everybody. Actually, in the Good Samaritan, there was even enmity between the Samaritans and the Jews, but he did the right thing even though he was considered an enemy. He never asked them to be him, his kind Samaritan, but rather he gave him mercy without being. Some people think this is too much money being spent to other people, but believe me, God is so generous and God is so kind. And when you give, he gives you back abundantly. And of course, we should not lose focus to heaven. It's not like we are trying to help people to be good on earth, but rather to help them to know God better and to focus on heaven. But as you all know, the winner of souls must be wise. There are, as you are aware, in many places, even denominations in Egypt, sometimes they didn't talk ab about Christ and sometimes they offended, they offended people because of their direct way. But if you are in your work and you have great ethics and you are sincere and you are faithful and honest, people will be affected and they may know who is Christ in you. And that's what John said in his epistle. The sons of God are revealed and the sons of the devil are also revealed. Serving should not be pressuring people. We should never really be pressuring anyone because sometimes it's an emotional need and it's not really an based on education and, and uh, uh, basics. So if anyone wants to come to Christ, he has to study, he has to learn, he has to be convinced logically, not just emotionally. He has to be mature in his own interest, not just based on some feelings. One of the people we use during for catechumens is Saint Cyril from Jerusalem. He used to give them a course for three years to be baptized. Of course, it, it looks long, but if you go to if you go to the Resurrection Church in Jerusalem, he would show you. Where is Saint Cyril of Jerusalem used to stand? The one that was built by Saint Helen. 
and he has sermons explaining all the basics of Christianity for, for the catechumens. And of course, all of this took so many years and long history. And that's why the apostles really impressed the whole world.
We are going to start another lecture under the same title of Maran Atha, which is the Lord is coming or the Lord is at hand. We agreed that his first coming was awaited by the whole creation. And then our Lord came, incarnated and became man. And he is guiding us to become like him. But also, he is also very close. In Philippians 4, St. Paul was imprisoned and he was in jail for a long time. He wasn't ever going to leave and he stayed for years, two years in Caesarea and two years in Rome. What about his own prayers? So why he is not being discharged? So St. Paul sent a letter from his jail to the Philippians and it was a very amazing epistle, basically asking them to rejoice and stay joyful and stay in peace. And the peace of God will actually preserve your mind in the peace of God and live as God wants you to live. And then he mentioned the word, the Lord is at hand, as a full sentence in a different theme of Maran Atha. The Lord is at hand, meaning you can reach Him anytime, you can touch Him. It's very easy to get to Him. It's not like you are going to take a very long road to heaven. It's not like you have to reach to church to reach to find Him. And of course the church is, is His house, but God is at hand. Just by you lifting your eyes, by even sighing, you actually close to Him. The idea and the concept of the Lord is at hand is a promise that you should enjoy His closeness. Maybe the response is still far. Maybe the change in the switching of your position is not yet there. But that doesn't mean God is distant. And that may answer the question about where are you, O Lord, when I was praying and asking, where were you when Paul was stoned and was about to die and people didn't know if he actually died and was raised again? Where were you when Abel was killed by his brother? You actually witnessed to Abel. Where were you? when Joseph was in the well and the brothers were laughing upstairs outside and they were very hard-hearted and they were very unjust. Where were you? Were you just happy to watch? Isn't that very difficult? Where were you, Lord? When Isaac will open and dig a, a, a well and all of a sudden another person takes it and takes the well from him and Isaac never really fights back and he will leave from one place to another. Is it okay with you, Lord, that Isaac keeps moving from one place to another and he keeps forgiving people? And then later on, you say that Isaac got hundred falls. Where were you when St. Paul cried out to you three times because of the thorn in his body? And he wants to serve. He wants to go from one place to another. Why you didn't cure him? And, he t and you told him, I am happy with your weakness. My strength is perfected in your weakness. 
I, I am happy to work with you while you are almost blind, while pus is coming out of your eyes and it could be embarrassing. And he said in one of the epistles that the affliction in my body was not, was not being ashamed by you. God was happy like that. Sure. So God, you say the Lord is at hand and when I try to catch you, I find you far. When I call you, you don't answer. When I ask even for normal requests, I didn't ask for, for vain pride or money. I'm just, sometimes I ask just to have a little mercy on me. The Lord is at hand. Saint Paul found out that God is not going to respond. So he was happy with that and he stops praying. And that's where he was happy and become joyful and he even baptized Ansemus and he became a bishop. And he came with four epistles, the epistles of the exile, Ephesians, Philippians, Philemon, and Colossians. I am with you inside the jail. Do you have to be outside the jail to see me? Even in your affliction, I am there. I was crucified. You can be crucified and both of us can be crucified together. I'll take care of you while you in your, your afflictions. Do you want to come down from the cross as they told Jesus? I am not promising you to come from the cross. I am already hung near you. Let me take care of this next to you. Don't let me do something against my own will. My will is good, perfect and complete. But your will is earthly and deceitful. But you think you know everything. Where were you when Stephen was stoned and James was beheaded, the brother of John? Why you didn't interfere? The Bible was not even written yet, the whole New Testament. James did not even see any part of the New Testament when he was beheaded. Who is that Herod that you allowed him to do all of this? And James is not angry, he went to heaven. Sometimes we get confused, is the Lord is at hand true or not? It is true, but not the way you understand it. It's not meaning he's at hand that he will do the things you want or you desire. I am before you and behind you. I will put my hand on you, but I'll keep you sick. So you put your hand on me and you are ahead of me and behind me, and I'm still sick because the problem is good for you. You want the problem to be lifted and I want the benefit of the problem. Where were you, Lord, when, when the churches were burned down and the people were murdered and kept astrays? When were you when your name and gospel were insulted? But we are going to praise his name till the end. You are at hand. As he said, Augustine, you were always with me. But because of my foolishness, I was not with you. But there wasn't a time you left me. The Lord is at near. The Lord is near. So how do I see God as close to me? First thing is, uh, 
شفت ده ربنا غني بيا دلوقتي ومعايا دلوقتي واقدر ادوق السنة دلوقتي God is near me now. God is close to me now. I need to taste his peace now. It really depends on the person. The first exercise, open my eyes, Lord. If you don't want to open the jail, open my eyes. If you don't want to solve the problem, solve the blindness of my eyes. If you don't want to change the conditions, just make my heart be at peace but I don't like to stay like that Lord I need to be changed and that's what Elisha Elisha did when he saw his disciple was very troubled Elisha told God open the eyes of my son so he can see that there are so much army of angels and all these trickers are counted and at the end of the day they are all blessings the king sent to Elisha and came by night and surrounded by the city so when the servant of the said do not fear for those who are with us are more than who we are with us and Elisha prayed and said I sat with so many people, feel very lonely. And I understand how bitter being lonely and hours and days. Pass without anyone calling you. Of course, very bitter feelings. How about if you think that there are so much around you? There are, pe there are creatures around you, angelic creatures, but you are still very bitter and depressed and hoping that your mobile will, will ring. But you forgot that angels are waiting for you to praise and crisis in your room, but, but you don't want to see him. And you don't try to see him. If you try to see him, you will. The Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And he found that the mountain is full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. It was an amazing scene. And Elisha came down and everybody was sold. And because of this, there has been no war between the Syrians and the Kingdom of Israel for a very long time. And he took the, the Syrians and fed them, so the war was stopped. But so the problem that happened is for you, not against you. Every problem you put it in the middle of prayer, lots of things that will come out. You just need good eyes, adjusted focus, and then you will see the beauty of the presence of God around you. You will see His hand who arranges things and design every step in your life. But because you don't see very well, and you you are you have a very opaque glasses you don't see what you're supposed to see believe me the things around you are well adjusted it's about you how to open lord open the eyes of these men that they may see strangely in the same story the eyes of the bad people were closed and they were guided to enter inside the city. Our eyes need to be open because it's closed because of laziness. His king wanted to kill the Assyrians in 
Second Kings chapter 6. So my father, shall I kill them? Shall I kill them? But he answered, you shall not kill them. And he asked them to do good to them, and he fed them, and they returned back good. So the bands of Syrian came no more into the land of Israel. Sometimes our pains and tribulations are the benefits to others. Maybe the pain that you are experiencing, others may see it and actually go to heaven because of it. So you take crowns and others because of you do too as well. Also, pray for yourself to receive your sight. Partimaus, son of Timaus, story. Some people claim that he is the teacher of praying. He is a beggar and he is blind. But they told him Jesus is going through the town. As soon as he heard and believed that he is passing by, he can't see him. He did not stop crying and screaming, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus brought, brought him to himself. He said, I want to be opened my eyes. So why are we losing and wasting our time? Why can't we pray eagerly and scream like party mouse? Why don't you say, Son of, Jesus, Son of God, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me? Maybe if you say it a thousand times, your eyes will be opened and, and your room will be a piece of heaven after you have been so bitter and so depressed. God is near. God is close. It's just our problem. We are not eagerly praying and insisting and persisting in prayers as much as he did until he was called. And that's why our Lord said, do not stop and cease praying. Can you imagine if Christ is asking someone, what do you want me to do for you? Is that possible, Lord? Can you call me and tell me what you want me to do with you? After this prayer, you can tell him everything. Of course, after a beautiful prayer like this, you are not going to ask for bad things. You are going to ask for the right things. Because the prayer will reveal to you the beauty of heaven. One time I visited a, a, a sick person and in the beginning I was asking for cure of my sickness. The second 10 years I was asking for peace. The third 10 years I was asking for people. I have stopped praying for myself. The people in my family was quarreling with me. How come you are not praying for yourself? I didn't care about praying for myself. I just know that I'm going to heaven and I want everyone to go with me to heaven. The prayers changed him. His condition didn't change, but the prayer changed his focus and attitude towards his problem. You have to confess and admit that you are blind. Maran Atta, I can't see you. I can't see you at work or at home. I can't see you close to me. Please open my eyes so I can see you. Father Jacob, in Genesis 28, I imagine that his grandfather Abraham told him a lot about his relationship with God. So Abraham is a friend of God. And when Isaac was placed on the Moriah's mountain to be sacrificed, he also have seen God. But Jacob didn't see 
God and he wasn't really concerning himself for seeing God. And then when he had so many issues and when he found that Esau wants to kill him and he was running from him and everything is messed up, he wanted to sleep. And then Christ appeared to him. He heard about him from his father and grandfather, but for the first time he sees him. He saw Christ coming down on a ladder. That's the that's the Lord that they have been talking to me about. And he found him very kind. <coughs> Jacob at that time was upset from himself and what he did. So God told him, as long as you are upset from yourself, I'm not upset from you. And he opened his eyes and said, the Lord in this place, and I didn't know. So the Lord is at hand. Wherever you go, he will he will be there. Someone I know was diagnosed with terminal cancer. One of the words he said, I agreed with God anywhere I go, in any hospital, any radiology place, you come with me. If I go through any investigation, you come with me. If I go through surgery, he comes with me. We take the chemotherapy together, we we go to radiation therapy together until we go to heaven together. I don't care what happens to me as long as you are at hand, you are near me. Hmm. The Lord in this place and I did not know it. The problem for Jacob didn't resolve yet and nothing really got better, but he felt better because the Lord is near. I am with you. Now you can continue your work and continue your path. I wonder when he goes to Laban, who really tricked him so many times, he told him, how come you are with me and you let me go through this? And after many years he returned back and he found that he was not tricked as he thought. The Lord in this place and I didn't know it. Remember this sentence. Wait on the Lord. and be of good courage. One time I heard the story about Africa. They were having problem entering Africa and one of the servants and they were praying and they are telling him you are going back home. So she prayed saying, I want you to, to resolve this intervene. All of a sudden the electricity started to to be put off. And then all of a sudden the, the security officer told them, let them go inside. And all of a sudden, the security officer allowed them to go inside without even reviewing their papers. There are times that he will intervene. He has his own ways and his own timing. In Isaiah 6, he felt bad. He attended six kings and the last one was very bad and one of them was Hosea the king 
he had leprosy and Isaiah was very feeling very bad about it because he considered him as if that's his son but then he saw God in his throne and he saw and heard holy 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 the Lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory when we see all the things that's happening in the on earth how can we say that his glory is filling the Lord the world yes his glory is filling both heaven and earth وفي روم 267 الكاردز بتاعتهم هنا بفكركم تاني ارجوكم خدوا اولادكم بسرعه قبل ما يتعبوا ونتقابل تاني بعد شويه ارجوكم بلاش الحجز عشان ما نتعبش حد شكرا